Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 175 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the -the behind-the-scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips, and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. Well, hey there, my friend. Welcome back. Welcome to episode number three of our spring new teacher training series. And if you're new to the podcast, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I am so grateful that you've chosen to spend a little bit of your precious time with me here today. And if you've been a longtime listener of the podcast, I'm so grateful that you're still continuing to invest your time and learn how to be the teacher you've always dreamed of being by tuning in every single week. I'm dedicating right now a series of eight episodes to topics for teachers who are getting ready to set up their first classrooms or for new teachers who have taught for a year or two and you just really want a more streamlined way of doing things inside your classroom for next year. So it's never too early to start thinking about how you're going to do things differently next year, especially if you're starting to think about how to wrap things up this year and you really want a better way of doing things. This is for you. We have been through so much the past couple of years in this profession. You don't need me to tell you that. I'm committed to staying in this with you and helping you to make next year a more positive, fun and streamlined experience, no matter what you've been going through up to this point. So be sure to listen carefully to this podcast. If you're multitasking, come back to me for a minute because this is so exciting. Speaking of things for your classroom, I'm going to be sharing a little later on how you can win a new MacBook Air computer for your new classroom. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. I love gift giving. It's my love language. So I love being able to do this for you. So listen carefully and I'll tell you a little more a little more later on about how you can win a MacBook Air computer for your classroom. So whether you have been teaching for a year or two or you're just graduating right now, I promise you that it's so worth it to put in the work and take the steps you need to right now and during the summer months, because that self-running classroom that you keep hearing about is not like a unicorn on a pixie dust rainbow. It's totally possible. It's totally doable. And I know that because I did it. I did it in my own classroom. I literally remember the day when I finally, I looked out at that sea of squirming second graders and I realized I've done it. I literally could walk out of my classroom right now and my students would not only hold each other accountable for getting their work done the way they know I expect it over the next half hour, but they would also be so super proud of showing me that they could do it. I realized that I'd finally figured out how to teach them what they needed and had created a space where they could be independent and think for themselves and make good decisions where they not only knew exactly what to do, but they loved being part of a community that worked together in harmony. They got to be more independent because I had taken the time, I had done the work to teach them how they could do that in this space. And it was an incredible feeling and I've never been so proud. But it wasn't always that way, of course. Like my first few years of teaching were tough. So if that's you right now, if you're really struggling, I totally get it. I really struggled. I've told you stories on this podcast before about how embarrassed I used to be (laughs) to take my class anywhere in the school because they were literally so out of control. I was embarrassed. I didn't know what to do at the time to turn things around. And I worked so hard and was so diligent about figuring this out that I dedicated my entire master's in education to answering the question, literally, new teachers, what's the problem here? And I wrote and published the Beginning Teacher's Handbook for Elementary School, and I traveled across the country teaching other teachers at conferences the secrets I'd learned to running a self-running, streamlined classroom because 
I didn't want anybody else to struggle the way I did. Like it's always, I always say at the end of every podcast that just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there's no need for you to struggle like one because I truly am dedicated to showing you the shortcuts and the secrets that I learned from other master teachers. And man, did I have some amazing mentor teachers over the years. And I hope that you pass this forward. Once you figure it out, once you know how to do this yourself, don't struggle the way that I did and pass it on to other teachers so you can cut through that overwhelm. So you cannot just survive in this profession, but so you can thrive and you can literally change this profession from the inside out and make it better. I absolutely love working with new teachers because you truly are the bright future of our profession. You're going to do incredible things inside your classroom and you're going to have a larger impact than you can even imagine right now. Even if you feel like a hot mess right now, I believe in you. I've been where you are. I know you can do this. Even though it feels incredibly hard at times, I know how lucky those kids are going to be in your classroom because once I figured it out, there was no place I'd rather be than on the other side of watching those kids show off how independent and how proud they were. There's nothing more incredible than watching your students soar and knowing that you helped set them up for success. You set up the circumstances for them to be successful. And that's why I've absolutely loved creating the Ready for School Academy, because once again, I've created a framework that can serve as a launch pad so that you can soar. It's so much fun. So if you're interested in joining the Academy, be sure to keep listening because I'll be telling you more about how you can join us this year in just a few more weeks. So today though, we're going to talk about one small piece of how you can be truly ready for the school year. We're going to talk about some of the most essential items that I'd love to see you pick up and start thinking about for your first classroom to set you up for success from the start. I know it's hard to know what to invest in, but I promise you that sometimes we can get so caught up in cute over function, right? So today let's talk about some of the things that you're actually going to need so you don't waste your money. Okay, so inside our Beginning Teacher Talk private Facebook group, there have been a lot of questions about what kinds of things you should be spending your money on and questions being asked about what you should actually be buying before you set up your first classroom. The reality is you could spend tons of money. You could spend thousands of dollars on a lot of really cute things. But then once you get into your classroom, you're going to realize that you actually don't need a lot of those things or things get donated to you or you meet your students and you realize that what you've purchased just isn't going to work with them. I know that the summer before I started teaching, I started to think about free time activities for my students and the kinds of things they might want to do during free time. And I went out and I bought a bunch of little games from the dollar store because I thought, hey, they might be really fun as free time activities. But did we ever use them? No, not one of them. Because first of all, the pieces got lost right away because I didn't have a system for students taking care of the games. And then it turned out that there was rarely a time when two or more students who actually wanted to play a game together would have more than five minutes of free time to enjoy the games anyways. And then most of the games were too hard for my students. So during their free time, I was bombarded with questions about how to play games that I hadn't even pl- played before myself. So I had never taught second grade before. So I just didn't know what level my students were going to be at when they first came into the room. But if I had waited until I met my students and I had a clear understanding of what they were really into and what they were capable of doing independently, I would have saved money and time. And I would have instead invested in those scholastic learn to draw books because my students that year were obsessed with them. If I just waited to get to know them a little, I would have known that's what they really want to do in free time. So just as important as talking about things that you do want to buy for your classroom is talking about things that you want to hold off purchasing until you meet your students. So things that I would invest in as a new teacher are things that you're going to want to use every single day with your students, regardless of their ability or age. So investing in a class schedule, for example, that you can display at the front of your classroom so your students know what's coming up each class period. That's a great investment. I would also invest in a class calendar because even if you're teaching upper elementary, students really like to know 
what's coming up each week and taking just a few minutes every morning as part of your morning routine to talk about birthdays that are coming up and special events like assemblies or field trips or days off of school can be a really important part of your morning meeting. Now, if you're thinking of becoming a Ready for School Academy member, don't purchase any of those items because you're going to have them all included as part of your membership as an Academy member. I literally give you everything you're going to need to set up your wall spaces inside your classroom in the Academy. So you'll get a class schedule, you'll get a class calendar, you'll get labels for your classroom library, you'll get a class job board, you'll get welcome banners, you'll get word wall templates, anything that you need for your classroom. So again, if you're thinking about joining the Academy, it will save you a ton of money because all of those things are included as an Academy member. Now, you're also going to want start to start thinking about, as I mentioned, your classroom library. Now, if you haven't already started gathering books for your first classroom, that's something I highly recommend you take some time to learn about books that are especially popular for the age of students that you're going to be teaching, and then start searching for books to use with your students in your own classroom. So I dedicated an entire episode all about 16 creative ways to find cheap or free classroom books for your classroom library. So I'll link to that episode in the show notes for this episode, episode number 175. So you can check that out. But one of my favorite ways to fill my own classroom library with books when I was a new teacher and I didn't have a lot of money to spend on books was to visit garage sales during the summer months. So often families whose children who have outgrown the books are selling them in garage sales, right? And they can be an amazing source of gently used secondhand books for your classroom. And on that note, of course, check out used bookstores. And if you're living in the United States, check out places online like Craigslist or anywhere in the world, Facebook Marketplace or Nextdoor, because there are often teachers who are retiring or changing grades and they might need to get rid of their books or even do a book exchange with you if you have books that you don't need and they might need. You can get amazing deals that way. But check out that related podcast episode if you're in the process of building your classroom library for more ideas and to get your creative juices flowing. Now, some of the other items I would recommend that you invest in, and by the way, you might want to start an Amazon wish list for these items so you can kind of keep track of what you really want. This one item is a game changer. It's a class set of whiteboard clipboards. Then you need also dry erase markers and a magnetic whiteboard eraser set because you can use these whiteboard clipboards for everything from like quick games to review concepts to partner work around the classroom or even using them on field trips for students to use to answer questions about what they're seeing and experiencing. So that's one of the items that I would recommend you actually invest in, that class set of whiteboard clipboards, dry erase markers, and magnetic whiteboard erasers. I also highly recommend that you invest in an electric pencil sharpener game changer. (laughs) Until you have 25 students needing sharpened pencils every single day, you do not realize what a lifesaver an electric pencil sharpener really is. So personally, I think these should be a staple in every classroom and that school should provide them for teachers because they are that important when it comes to seriously saving your sanity. But if you don't already have one of these in your classroom and your school does not provide an electric pencil sharpener, I would definitely recommend investing in one or even two for your classroom. And I will link to my ultimate Amazon wish list for new teachers in the show notes for this episode. So you can check out some of the most popular items for new teachers inside that wish list as you start thinking about the things you really want to invest in for your own classroom. So there is a great electric pencil sharpener on there that is highly rated, but you don't have to get that one just as an idea. Now, one of the other popular items among new teachers are wireless doorbells. So these are really cute. You can use them in your classroom. And the cool thing about these doorbells is that they have so many different chimes that you can set them to. And because they're such a unique sound, you can quickly and easily get your students' attention because it's a sound they don't normally hear in the classroom. Or you can teach your students that when they hear the chime two times or three times, just whatever you decide, that means they need to stop what they're doing and give you their full attention. So many teachers love these because they're just a fun and creative way of getting your students' attention quickly and easily. 
Also, you'll want to think about how you can quickly and easily display student work. And one of the ways you can do that is with colorful dry erase pockets. Now, if you don't know what these are, they're basically like super sturdy plastic page protectors. So you can put student work inside them and hang them on your bulletin boards to protect student work, especially during COVID when custodians were using all kinds of sprays to clean off classroom surfaces. One of the big complaints from teachers and the drawbacks was that student work on display would get ruined from the overspray from those cleaners. But whether or not custodians are still cleaning this thoroughly once the danger of COVID has passed, they're a great way to showcase student work as well. And they serve as erasable worksheets for student work. So you can just pop in any worksheet you want students to do and then have them complete the work using dry erase markers so you can save paper and you can give students a different option than just writing on paper as usual, which they love. And also you can use color, which is really nice. You can use different colored paper. And if you want to print in color a class set of a certain worksheet, then you have that on hand. You don't have to keep printing it again. Now, the other thing you might want to think about picking up is a few extra sets of student supplies for your grade level. Now, new inside the Ready for School Academy this year, if you purchased the Academy last year, you're going to get this as well. I'm giving you sample class supply lists for each grade level. So you have an idea of the kinds of things you might want to be asking your students to bring as part of their back to school supplies. Now, just be aware that your school may already have a set supply list that they ask each grade of students to bring. So check with your school before you create your own supply list. I mean, it's terrible again that we would have to provide supplies for students, but so often often we do this as teachers because it's just easier to have some extra supplies on hand than to have a student show up with nothing and not have any supplies to use. It's hard to imagine, but every single year I would always get one or two students who showed up in my classroom who weren't on my student list and who showed up with any supplies at all maybe because they were in foster care, maybe they just landed in a new foster family. It's really tricky because it isn't the student's fault, right? But it puts everybody in an awkward position when these students show up without any supplies. And the last thing you want is for that child to feel like they don't belong when already they're feeling displaced. So no, it's not part of our job description and no, it's not required. And yes, I really wish that things were different. But I just learned over the years that when all of those great back to school sales came on over the summer months, it was much easier for me to just scoop up a few extra supplies and basics like pencils and crayons when they went on sale, not a class set. I'm not suggesting you buy them for all your students, but just have a few extra on hand because if you have to purchase them in the middle of the school year, when a, per- when a student shows up empty handed, man, it's so expensive. It's so much more expensive. And often it's just temporary anyway. Most students who eventually do get their own supplies and you can get your own supplies back again to use for another student who might need them. But it's just really great to have some on hand. Now, the other thing that I would really encourage you to start thinking about are small self-care items that you're going to need throughout the day so you are prepared when you are busier than you've ever been. There's no busy like new teacher busy, especially at the beginning of the year. And I learned to keep kind of like a teacher self-care kit inside my classroom because there are many days when things come up that you just don't anticipate And it's so important to have a lot of these kinds of items on hand so you can handle them as they come up. So some of the items I would include in your teacher self-care kit include a rain jacket, rain boots, and an umbrella for those days when you're on supervision and it starts pouring rain. You'll also want to keep other things on hand for emergency health situations like cough drops. You will be surprised. You're probably going to lose your voice in the first week of school because you just don't realize how much you need to talk. I lost my voice every year at the beginning of the school year. You're going to need things like ibuprofen and Tums. Just lock them away in your filing cabinet so that you have them on hand when you need them. Start thinking through some of the different kinds of things you might need throughout the day, like high energy snacks that don't need to be refrigerated and even a mini sewing kit. You Trust me, (laughs) when a seam splits and you don't want it to, holy cow, that mini sewing kit is a godsend. You need hand lotion and band-aids, anything like that that you might need throughout the day. Now, I know you might be listening to this and thinking, but I really want to buy things for my classroom so I can decorate it, make it beautiful. I don't want to be thinking about that stuff. But I really recommend that you wait 
until you actually see the space where you're going to be teaching before you invest in a whole bunch of beautiful items that you might not even be able to use. So every year I see inside our beginning teacher talk private Facebook group, teachers posting about being heartbroken because they just saw their first classroom and discovered that it was much smaller than they thought it was going to be. Some of them don't even have windows, which I think is horrible. I mean, I don't even know how we can ask children to spend all day, every day in spaces like that. But they see this tiny space and suddenly those adorable chairs that they had purchased and the flexible seating they had invested in wasn't even going to work. So I usually recommend that you wait to buy any larger items until you find out what kind of a classroom space you have, what your school will provide, or even what the previous teacher might have left you. It's amazing sometimes what teachers leave when they retire and you can get an entire classroom sometimes almost fully decorated. Whether or not it's what you want, that's another story. (laughs) So instead, I recommend that you think about getting yourself organized and invest in things like a teacher planner and a student data binder. So you can start thinking about how you want to organize the massive amounts of paper and data and planning that you're going to need to do this school year. So again, I'll link to two examples of both a teacher planner and my student data binder in the show notes for this episode. But if you decide to become an Academy member, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your teacher planning binder and your student data binder. And I'll show you what you need to include and what you need to think through in advance. So these are the kinds of things I really recommend you start thinking about as you prepare for your first classroom and your first year of teaching, instead of focusing only on buying things on Amazon. Also, I really recommend that you start thinking about that first week of school and how you're going to create a classroom community in those first few weeks and set the tone for a positive start to the year. So related to that, I encourage you to start thinking about classroom books you might want to read to your students during those first few weeks to help set the tone for a positive school year and to help you teach your routines and procedures. So I'm going to be offering an amazing masterclass in just a few weeks that I really want Want you to attend where I'll walk you through a step-by-step plan to prepare for the school year. And as part of that experience, I'll be inviting you to a pop-up Facebook group. It's going to be so much fun where I'm going to be giving away a fantastic back to school book every single day for two weeks. So when you sign up for my masterclass in just a few weeks, I'll be inviting you into that private pop-up Facebook group where we're going to have some amazing giveaways every single day. And speaking of amazing giveaways for your new classroom, when you are part of that pop-up group, I will also tell you how you can enter to win your very own MacBook Air computer for the school year. So much fun. But you can only get invited if you're part of that special pop-up Facebook group. So don't miss it. I'll be giving you more details in the coming weeks. So exciting. So in the show notes for today's episode, episode number 175, I'll also link to some of my favorite first week of school books that you might want to check out and start thinking about adding to your Amazon wish list or asking for as graduation gifts if you're just graduating with your degree. Such a great gift. Now, finally, the upcoming summer is also a great time to do some reading to help you prepare for your first year of teaching or to help you revise or refine some of the things you're already doing inside your classroom if you already have a classroom of your own. So I'll also link to a list of my favorite must reads for new teachers in your first five years. So you can check out that list and pick up one or two books that will likely be very helpful for you as you start thinking and planning for the school year in the fall. All right, my friends, we covered a lot today. I hope that was helpful for you as you start thinking about the kinds of things you might want to invest in as you prepare to set up your first classroom. And again, I'll link to my new teacher, Amazon, Ultimate Amazon wish list as well, if you want to check that out and kind of get an idea of the kinds of things you might want to be thinking about adding to that list. But don't buy a lot yet. Wait till you know your classroom, know the grade, and have a clear idea of what you're going to have access to before you start spending your own money. Now, before I say goodbye today, if you haven't taken my quiz yet, head over to my website at drlaurifrazen.com and take the new teacher quiz right away because when you complete that quiz, you're going to get a customized plan outlining your next 
five steps towards becoming the teacher you've always dreamed of being. So all you have to do is answer four simple questions, and then you're going to get a customized roadmap of the next five steps you need to take in your teaching journey. So whether you've just graduated from college, you're in the midst of interviews, or you've just been hired, you're getting ready to set up your first classroom and teach your first year, or maybe you've been teaching for a year or two or three, and you want a more streamlined way of running your classroom, that quiz is for you. So head to drlauriefriesen.com to take the quiz and to download the episodes that are going to speak to exactly to where you are right now in your growth as an educator. And I'll also link to where you can take the quiz inside the show notes for this episode. Finally, before I leave you, be sure to share this episode with someone else who you think might be able to benefit from it. If you have another teacher bestie who you think, oh my gosh, they would love this information, please pass the love, pass on the positivity, and let them know that this is a resource for them as they prepare for their first year. And also be sure to check out my mini episode this Saturday where I'll be sharing a great hack for helping your students to get rock star ready every morning as part of their morning routine so that you can ensure a smooth start to your day. All right, my friend, I hope you have a wonderful week. And as always, remember, just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.